Hi, this is Tim Evans. Uh, welcome to another Keller Chamber Lunch and Learn. Uh, today we're going to talk about Facebook tips and tricks. Uh, I have Kathy Young from the Chamber online. How are you, Kathy? I'm doing great. Glad to have everybody here. Excellent. So uh, if you guys have questions, uh, <clears throat> any questions, feel free to interject. Um, you know, when you feel it's appropriate stopping point, or you can uh, put questions in the chat bar uh, by going to the left side of your screen. You'll see a uh, black bar with icons. The top one is the chat box, and I have the chat box open. So uh, I'll just do a test chat so you guys can see it. And that way, if you have a question, you can put it there. Uh, and I have that window open, so I'll be able to see that. Kathy, you can open it up as well. So. Uh, Guys, let's get let's get this started here. Um, <clears throat> what I'm going to do is switch over and share my screen so that you guys can see the presentation, and uh, you'll hear my voice from there. All right, here we go. Okay, we're so um, this presentation will talk about how to use Facebook effectively um, and how to be avoid being distracted. Um, it's uh, you you know if we're using this for business, we want it uh, to help our business, uh, not um, not uh, be a, uh, a distraction for the business. Um, we've got plenty of distractions, so we don't need to add to that. Um, I'll show you a few new ways to interact with clients and customers, new ways to promote your company, um, how you can build your business using Facebook, uh, and if you're looking for the, the uh, slide deck, you can go to uh, slideshare.net forward slash Tim Evans 4, and uh, that should be a shortcut. You should be able to see my link. Um, and. Uh, presentations there, and you'll be able to grab that one called Facebook Webinar Slide Rotary. So, so um, I'm going to go ahead and open up to the floor. Uh, just I always like to get a you know custom tailor this a little bit. So, if there's a particular question that you have on, you know top of mind on you know how you could use Facebook better or or what it's for uh, or you know what the mo what um, any thoughts along those lines. So, does anybody have anything to add? To the agenda. We've got a quiet group here, huh? Kathy, I know you. You love to be on Facebook. I know you got a question. Yeah, <laughs> so. The distraction part. I think that's huge for most people. It's so hard. You get on there and you're just there promoting your business or wanting to share things, and it's. I mean, rabbit trails. That is probably one of the biggest challenges for people is to not be distracted to make sure that your time on Facebook. For marketing your business is pure. It's wow. definitely a challenge. Perfect. Well, let's. Uh, we. Um, I've got some good tips on that. Um, why Facebook? You know, it's where it's a community where people are. So you know, it's like anything, like a newspaper, like a chamber. You know, you just want to reach out to where your customers are. Very simple. Uh, and they have a lot of users. I think we all know this. Um, surprisingly, one tidbit is that there are more mobile users now than non-mobile users. So um, that always surprises me. But uh, it's uh, with smartphones becoming uh, the norm, um, you you need to think about how you're doing uh, your Facebook and make sure that it's uh, your your whether it's your website or your other marketing materials, make sure that they're mobile optimized, right? Um, the big question I get is, do Facebook users buy? And absolutely they do. Mm -hmm. uh, and in fact, there are a lot of Facebook marketers out there, or marketers, who use Facebook and use the community and actually are able to use Facebook at, to uh, as a way to drive traffic so that they can make Direct sales through that through their Facebook 
uh, business page. So um, it, it is highly effective for business uh, if you're using the right marketing strategies. Of course, um, it's affordable, obviously. Uh, most of it's free, although they are more and more what you're seeing uh, is that Facebook is controlling how many people actually see your posts, and that number is going down. Uh, it's becoming less and less. So you just have to be aware of that. Um, they're just like anybody else, uh, any other business. They're in it to make a profit, um, and that's their goal. So uh, while it is really affordable now, you can't expect costs to continue to go up um, uh, because if they have the if they have the thing that everybody wants, guess what? They're going to charge for it. Big cons, distractions, right? Mm -hmm. Overwhelm. Um, I think this one, you know, people get excited sometimes about Facebook and they forget about you know their other marketing tactics. Um, so uh, it can be that can be a problem. Um, you, it needs to be part of the strategy. It doesn't need. It should not be your only strategy. And well, on to the immediate mm -hmm. negative comments. I mean, people make a comment, they forget that you can't take it back. Yes, there is that. Yes, absolutely. And you know, to that end, uh, when you do have a negative comment, um, you want to. Uh, reply to that in a very professional way you know and because the whole world's watching so you know I, I always say if somebody has a negative comment you know um, uh, it's okay to respond to them but you know use it use as an, use it as an opportunity for you to um, uh, to kind of reach out to them and help uh, fix that whatever it is or whatever their view is, and then uh, worst case, if it is uh, on your Facebook business pages, you can't like if it's a negative comment in in um, in uh, the feed, you can um, basically block that. You know, if they're if they're if um, if it's doing something in a, if somebody's doing something inappropriate. Um, reviews, ne actual negative reviews, and I have a question here: Is there a way to prevent somebody from posting a negative review? Um, no, there is not. Um, the way Facebook has it set up, I mean, if they're on Facebook and they see to leave a review, um, the only way you can prevent those is if you create your own feedback loop in your business where you're collecting, you're constantly collecting feedback, okay, reviews, uh, and if you had a private one, then that review would not get online. It would go right to you. So, um, and if it had, uh, if you've got the right system in place, if they gave you a positive review, then you could actually ask them to post it onto Facebook from there. So, hopefully, that answers your question. <clears throat> um, really, it's this is the fundamental thing that you really have to get clear on uh, when you're trying to do anything on Facebook. That is your strategy. So, a lot of people get a Facebook business page and they make it all about the business and you know it's they're putting up prices or they're putting you know they're putting up their services they're you have to remember this is a community and so what you're trying you know what you want to have some kind of attraction um, to bring that community in and uh, so if you just step back for a second and say, okay, what is my goal here? Do I, do I want it to promote, increase sales, build my brand awareness? You know, what is it that I really want to do? And then from there you can say, okay, this is the strategy. So for example, if I was a title company uh, and my market uh, for referrals is our realtors, well, instead of having a title company business page I would probably create a some sort of realtor resource 
maybe around the title piece or maybe just around the whole purchasing process. Um, every, every home buyer has to have a title, uh, so they're required to do it. So if you make a community around uh, that and, make, and become a resource now for the realtors who are your main referral source, then you have uh, now a, a uh, business page that, peop that realtors are going to consistently come back to. And um, the pattern that I like to use uh, for those type of community type pages is that um, I would do a minimum of four to five posts around the community, okay? Not around the business. And then say every fifth or sixth one, you might insert something about your actual business. Um, by doing this then, now you've created a community, you've got um, uh, you know, something that uh, a, you know, a, whoever your target audience is, is wanting to come back to over and over at, to use as a resource. And you see examples like this all the time, and I can, I'll show you some uh, here shortly, um, but uh, the community, um, the, a lot of the homeowner association group pages, um, I see a lot of uh, uh, buy sell pages for, you know, like the Keller buy sell page. And um, that is, you know, depending on what your, what your target market is, I mean, that's an excellent way for a business to create some kind of community that their consumers will come back into and then periodically they can um, interject their, their particular message. Just reading a question here. Uh, how effective would you say social media marketing like Facebook and Twitter, Google Plus is for local new business owners? Would you say it's more effective for more established or larger businesses? I think it, it depends. Um, I would say if you know who, if you're a small, a new small business and you know who your target market is, so um, there's a, a chamber member um, who owns a uh, fold-up bed company. I will, I'll just use him as a great example. He knows his customer segment. Um, it, you know, it's uh, somebody with a small home. They're they're usually in a certain age demographic, uh, and they don't you know they need something just a little more room, but they don't want to add on to their house. Well, there are communities out there uh, on Facebook that already exist that he could be tapping into um, or make his own community similar to that and then drive traffic to it for whatever whatever reason uh, or, or using advertising dollars through Facebook and uh, Facebook ads and things like that to drive traffic. So if you know your target audience, it makes a huge difference and you can run ad campaigns on Facebook, you can drive traffic, uh, and you can use that as effective vehicle. If you don't, if you're just doing it to broadcast, I would say it should just be a small part of your strategy. Um, you know, uh, but bottom line is, you gotta get clear on the strategy, and if you guys have, you know, if you wanna reach out to me, uh, after the webinar, and you know, I'd be happy to talk with you a little bit about that and help you get that clear for you, uh, because um, that's where you got to start first uh, before you spend a ton of time on this. So <clears throat> these are just some of the when I'm planning the strategy. You know, how am I going to reach them? Um, you know, I want to ultimately build a list from my Facebook page. I want to create a you know, I want to capture that so that I can have a way to market to those people. So, you know, I'm going to do daily posts, I'm going to do Facebook ad campaigns, I'm going to pro I'm going to do uh, video uh, you know, right on the page because it has high interaction, you know, and I'm going to use different uh, uh, tools, uh, email capture tools so that I can get permission to market to those people. Um, 
<clears throat> and then just start measuring the engagement. You know, what what are they doing? You know, um, I think the one thing I I really like about Facebook is that, uh, and the big brands do this pretty well. You can they will interact with you, and so um, it makes it feel more personal, even though you're you know one of many you know so I mean I, the other day I I happen to like Wolf Brand Chili I'm from Texas and uh, I had something I had a really bad can I don't and and I said did you I got online I said you know I really love Wolf Brand I you know my wife thinks I'm crazy but uh, I think you changed the recipe because it's it's runny and they you know got back to me and you know and it it really felt uh, like I was having a personal conversation, you know. So um, that was a great, you know. And I know other people had this were thinking the same thing I was thinking, but maybe they just hadn't taken the time to complain. So um, I think uh, when you're using Facebook, you you know, you take your traditional advertising that you're using now, whether that's a newspaper, um, billboards, you know, door hangers, things like that. Um, or advertising on Google, you can kind of tie it all together so that um, you know it's uh, more effective uh, and has more more channels. You know, the, the the biggest challenge you have now in in marketing your business is that there's so many things you can do. So don't feel like you have to do this. Come up with a strategy. Figure out how you could engage, and if it makes sense, do it. If it doesn't, it's okay, you know. Whatever you're using to get your leads, um, it, it doesn't necessarily have to have Facebook involved. Okay, we keep going. Um, now, how do you engage customers in the daily posting? And this talks to time wasting. I, um, I do not post every day. Okay. Um, what I do is I actually schedule them out. So I take maybe an hour, uh, an hour a week, could be an hour a month, but I actually go and I decide what posting I want to do, along you know, and go out and find the material at one sitting, and then I take that and I get online and I post it using their timer. And it's a really simple process, and I can show you a little bit about that. Um, and that way, it's scheduled. It just runs on autopilot. You don't, you know, you don't have to be. Oh, I didn't do my post for the day. Um, the patterns you want to run, um, you know, uh, would be. Uh, this is what the experts um, and what I found to be true, as I've measured when we get the most response. Um, and that seems to be somewhere in the you know seven to eight a.m., the three p.m., and believe it or not, eight p.m. at night. So I usually just pick one of those times and I do a daily post. Um, but you, you know, if you're having successful engagement and you have a you know some kind of product or or you know um, vision that you could do more. Um, you're not going to overpost because you have to think of it this way. Some people get on at 8 a.m. before their day starts. Some people don't get on till they take their you know break at uh, you know at the uh, afternoon, and some people don't get on till 8 p.m. So chances are, though, of those three buckets, they may not see your message. Um, and then to get really sophisticated. Uh, when I when I um, help with a uh, coach a client, what we actually do is we build uh, 90 to 120 days worth of content, uh, and then we're actually able to resort it, uh, reuse it, because um, a lot of you know even if you post the same thing uh, on day one. And then on day 91, you post the same thing you posted on day one. Chances are, 
people won't remember it anyway, or they never even saw it. So um, what that overwhelm you feel from like, oh, I've got to do all this stuff, and it's just taking all my time and driving me crazy, eliminate that overwhelmed feeling and just you know, take the time, schedule it out, and then build it over, build a little bit over time, and then you know, as you get enough content, you'll be able to go back and repurpose some old content. So that's a little ninja trick uh, that uh, you know I've learned uh, Facebook. Um, okay, so um, uh, got a question here. What program do you recommend for scheduling social media posting to Facebook, Twitter? And Instagram, um, there it, there are a ton of ton of tools, um, uh, and I I use um, one called I never can remember what what it's what the acronym stands for. It's uh, I F T T T dot com. It, oh, if then this, if this then that. Um, so it takes a. It's basically a program um, that uh, you can use, and you just tell. Okay, if I have this post, uh, if this post happens, then post it here. Or do this. Do that. You know it. it uh, so then you can create the pattern you want. Uh, and then have one place to kind of post your uh, social media and then just replicate it. Now Facebook has Twitter and Inst I think I think they've recently added Instagram because they bought Instagram. So um, I may be wrong about that, but um, you can uh, set up your Facebook post to automatically post to other media. And once you program it, you schedule it ahead in Facebook and you've already set up the automated uh, posting to the other social medias, it'll just do it from Facebook. So, little, little trick. But the super ninja trick, uh, I-F-T-T-T dot com. If, then, this, that's what that stands for. All right. Um, I'm not going to talk too much about setting up profiles, but other than I um, this one simple thing. A lot of small businesses get this, uh, have this problem. They set it up as uh, a, a individual. You cannot set up a business page until you have an individual Facebook page. So some people just set up a business page as an individual. Don't do that. That's um, if just set up your personal page about yourself if you don't have one. And then you can go into Facebook, and there's all sorts of videos on Google, on uh, YouTube. That you can Google that'll show that Fa Facebook has them. It's really simple. Set it up, but do it. Do an actual business profile, business page for yourself. <clears throat> um, assign names. Uh, this is one thing I see that a lot of businesses aren't doing, and you really want to do this because this will actually show up on Google searches. So, uh, and it's really easy. People can remember this. So, I when I give out, you know, if I want them to go to my community page, um, and if you guys would do me a favor, I'm going to put this in the chat box. You guys would go out and like this page. Um, I just put in the chat box facebook.com TX Coffee News. Uh, and you can kind of see what that business page looks like. And just hit the like button. Uh, that'd be great. I'd really appreciate that. All right. And um, most everybody's doing the cover pages. These are the, I think, I believe these are the current <laughs> dimensions, but you know how Facebook is. And all the uh, social media companies, they're constantly changing. So um, when that does happen, I do think it. You want to look as professional as possible. So if they make a change, uh, you know, fix it. If you don't have it, 
absolutely uh, you need to do it, and um, uh, you can just crop and crop something off of your website. There's a really inexpensive program if you use. Um, uh, it's actually free with Windows, uh, called the Snipping Tool. So you can just uh, go snip, you know, your uh, the header for your website and put it in there, uh, and that'll make a really quick fix. Here's some examples. And um, this is this is the SEO part of that I was talking about earlier. They're all these business pages are public. That's why you want to do a business page because they get indexed. What you're going to find is um, by using that title, um, uh, that will help that get found. And some people, when they if they're searching for you, um, I found they they like going to your Facebook page. They like to check that out. So you know. It's just another alternative to your website. Really, in my opinion, for small businesses, if you don't if you don't have a really clear strategy on the community, then really your Facebook page just becomes a credibility tool, much like your website. I mean, nobody nobody in business uh, goes around without business cards, or it's very rare. And it and uh, now almost nobody has. Does not have a website, right? That's become uh, common. You know, what's your website? So this is kind of in that same, you know, just another credibility tool. Especially if you have, um, if you're able to uh, get your customers to share feedback, to give reviews on Facebook and put comments and share pictures, and there's a whole bunch of strategies you can do around that on uh, happy customers. Um, and then, you know, in fact, I would say that's probably one of my favorite strategies to do for Facebook is to create, uh, is if I don't have something where I'm creating a community, then I'm making it about my customers. I'm making it a place where my customers can go and say great things about, you know, how it was, how it was useful for them or, you know, um, uh, what a difference it's made, you know, things like that. Um, and of course, they're not just going to magically show up and do that for you. You're going to have to ask for that. You're going to have to create conversations. You're going to have to email them. You know, you're going to have to, uh, you know, build a little bit of a system so that you can encourage that. In fact, using um, a contest. Um, so. <clears throat> um, I'm not going to talk too much about likes. There, there's a ton of stuff on that. Um, I do, you know, there are some people that will say it provides social proof that you know uh, that you actually have an audience. Um, of course, you know, some there's a way to buy likes. So I don't know that that's all. To me, it's um, that's not as relevant. It's, it would be. I might have um, 10,000 likes but no engagement on the page. So what if there's 10,000 likes? Now if I had uh, you know, 2,000 likes and people were engaging and looking at my content and making comments and doing things, I'd feel much happier about that. So uh, contest, this is uh, a highly, highly effective way to get uh, engagement on your page, and um, I think there is there isn't any business that can't do a contest. Um, so you know you just got to figure it out. But you know this is that strategy part. You got to sit down a little bit and talk about okay, what is it I really want to do? What you know what are we what are we looking for? We want to use it um, to build an email list. We want it to Increase our likes. You know, do we want engagement? Um, you, the world really is your oyster here. I mean, uh, I think that's one of the great things about Facebook. 
Um, and this talks a little, you know, a little bit about some of the apps you can use. There's a bunch of third-party apps um, if you actually want to use a professional. But you can keep it really simple. Um, I would just run a contest, uh, a post, and, and tell, tell them, be very explicit on what you want them to do. Um, and uh, have them do that on the page. And then once you start having success with it, you can then, you know, pay more money and actually get a tool, a third-party tool that can capture some more information uh, around those, uh, uh, like their name and email and telephone numbers so that you can use it for bliss building. Any questions so far? I'm going to skip over some of this. This is Facebook apps. I'll, we'll, I'll show you a few. Um, few of these when we go go live. Facebook's app, apps are really probably uh, something that I wouldn't recommend to a, um, a beginner. I would, you know, um, it'll just complicate it and make it, um, there's more, there's more important things to focus on when early on. <clears throat> um, one of the things you want uh, when you are doing your content, you want to ask for shares. You know, you want to be explicit um, and talk about. Uh, you know, sometimes encourage them. So, hey, uh, please like this post. Uh, if you think this is hilarious, please, you know, uh, for, you know, um, share it. You know, things like that. It's okay to do that. Um, that's part of the viral effect. So, uh, and that when we. When I um, go to the website, I'll show you. So this is some content that people have been sharing. Just click, click a button in here. Most people, it's gotten pretty intuitive. Um, uh, one of the things I have, one of the things that I've noticed that's worked really well with Facebook is it's less. It's um, we. When I do the posts, most of the posts are uh, memes or pictures, some kind of graphic attached with it. Uh, I'll do the majority of posts that way. With I usually add a little bit of words, um, and then uh, um, I might I might have um, uh, some content only. And then I'll post that there, but I found it to be more effective when you have some kind of picture. I, I think it's just the dude. We're, I don't know if we're just too lazy or we just, but you know that visual component, um, it really does make a difference. And we've seen a pattern of uh, increased engagement using using graphics with any post. And now video is. Um, really taking off inside of Facebook, so um, you know you could do a video of a happy customer with your iPhone or your Android phone. Um, you can do you know all sorts of stuff. You can actually take uh, videos of uh, from other businesses or you know something you know funny. Um, uh, or relevant to whatever it is, it doesn't have to be your video. Uh, you can just, you know, go and, and capture as long as it's relevant to what your objective is for your page. Um, but I would hi I highly recommend doing doing that. The engagement is very high with that, and um, video is becoming more and more uh, um, a an exceptional way to market yourself. All right, let me, um, these are some more technical questions here, let me, so selling on Facebook, does anybody do selling on Facebook? If you do, put it in the chat box. I think I'm going to, let me. I don't, but I know boutiques that do. Do you? Okay. So I'm just gonna. What I'm gonna do? We'll come back to this. Let me let me um, pull up some real time examples. Here was the website I was telling you about. 
you make sure you guys can see that. Can you? See, everybody can see that, right? So this is the this is the tool I like to use to post media. So you can do anything with it. It's it's um it's, it's pretty easy to program, uh, and they've got videos on it. Just click join. Um, let me go pull up. Um, give you some tidbits for. Um, Hosting, you can see uh, here on your business page. They're telling you, you know, obviously how many you've reached, how many people liked it. Um, you can kind of see what the engage, you know, what's a dud, and uh, and what worked really well. And in my, you know, my on my page, it's mine is really a lot like. The actual coffee newspaper in the restaurant. You know, we're doing. It's just fun things. It's just you know, it's another way. My strategy really is just another way for me to touch my reader when they're after they've already read that week's edition. Just another way, you know, for people. And I've run contests in it. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, um, give you an example of. Uh, um, these are some shares that I've done for uh, one of the charities we support. If I, you know, have clients, I'll post some of their stuff. I mean, you know, if you know other business owners, you know that, and you want to help their business out, you know, you want to, you absolutely want to share. Um, I'm trying to, and you never know what's going to work. So, this is an example of one that I just thought it was funny, and apparently so did everybody else because it had 21 shares, 12 likes, some comments, and it reached you know 800 people. So, um, that was really the for me creating this community. I started to realize. Um, you know, this is another vehicle, another way for my business to reach out to my uh, my raving fans. You can see they here's the contest. I don't know if you guys can see this. Let's see if I can make it bigger. So, part of our contest, we actually encourage them to share it on Facebook. So I'm getting in, so here's one I had yesterday, and you know periodically I I always come in and I like it, and then periodically I'll actually give away some tickets as part of the contest, and I'll I'll pick some from the paper and some from our Facebook from our Facebook channel. So um, let's see if I can find another. Here's another good example. Um, I have a lot of women readers, and so my wife would kill for this. <laughs> this uh, laundry folder. In fact, I don't know why we don't have one. We have washers and dryers, right? And I mean, it just it, you know, it was uh, it was very well received. It's another client. So this is some examples, um, you know, of how we're using it for engagement. And uh, you know this is this is a, a client up in Louisville. I and I helped them with their reputation strategy. We actually started doing uh, their uh, five-star reviews and making a graphic out of it. And people like it. It uh, now we go to his page. He had more engagement, but I, I wanted to just reach out to other other people. And the cool thing about this is, I wonder if I can find the if I can. I'm able to share this. Uh, let's see. Actually, let's just do a post. I want to show you what I was talking about on the programming. Back to the top. Okay. So um, here, this is the programming. So if you you want to schedule it out, so I can I can pick out any date. 
put 8 a.m. p.m. doesn't matter. And then I can actually drill down. So I'm in, uh, the Piper is in um, all over the Metroplex, all over Dallas Fort Worth. And so uh, some content is only relevant for Keller or North Fort Worth. So I make sure that, you know, it just goes to Bull and Keller. And so I can, I can um, control that. And I can add a picture. I can boost. You're doing, uh, if you're trying to build a community, a, a boost is a good, cheap way to do. I usually set it at five, five bucks. It's, it, it tells you how many people will reach out to you. That's just a good way, especially when you're starting out. Um, but you schedule it. You get up here and you schedule it. Um, add your, add your photo or video. You know, it's really, really simple. Um, you can do this. You know, you can do a, a, you know, a week's worth of content in about an hour, uh, on average. You know, depends on, uh, obviously, how how much time you have to spend finding your content. Um, the other trick I do is when I find good content, I just save it. I have a file, so if I when I'm seeing something, I'll just make a note. Oh, I'll right click as save it put it in the file, that way I'm saving my time. I can just come to it, uh, write it uh, when I'm, you know, when I've got it blocked out to actually do post on Facebook. Um, so that's kind of what, um, uh, that is kind of the strategy, I think, to make it successful so you don't get into overwhelm, um, so that you're uh, um, being effective because frankly, if it's a distraction and it's taking away from your time and it's not bringing you in business uh, and there's not a return on investment, then yeah, you, you might be, you might have a Facebook addiction. <laughs> I want to be careful about that because uh, Kathy, like you, you talked about earlier, I mean, you can go down um, uh, a black hole, so to speak. Um, in fact, I'll show you one of my favorites. Um, I actually try to stay off. Uh, oh, I'm trying to let me find one in my feed. There we go. There's my feed. So um, don't remember what it's called. Uh, Upworthy. I I'll tell you what. I have to stay away from this because. Their content is so engaging that I will literally lose 20 minutes before I go, oh, what was I thinking, you know? And they just got really good content. So they're, they figured out, and they have a, I mean, they have a, you know, I mean, a ton of fans. So they get it, you know, they just, it's just really good, compelling content. It actually drives it. It's designed to be a supplement to their actual website. Um, uh, so, um, and kudos to them. They are highly sophisticated. So this is a good model for you to look at. You know, if you're trying to figure out how to how to how to build a type of community. Um, so any. Uh, I'm just reading some questions here. So I was about to ask, are there any questions? <laughs> um, I'm not sure about the referring to posting jobs. Um, if you give me a little more insight of what you're looking for. And Kathy, what did you mean for sale, Keller? What? Um, you asked uh, who, if anybody sells online on Facebook and. There's lots of you know garage sales and communities that sell on Facebook. Oh, absolutely, yeah, yeah. But but businesses can sell too. Right. You know. Uh, but what determines the the reach of the post? It, it, sometimes you only reach six. Sometimes you reach sixty. Sometimes you reach two hundred. I mean, what determines that? Okay, so the so um, uh, basically. Uh, they have six million likes, so Facebook is sending this out into people's news feeds who have shared it. So the more you, the more your customer clicks on 
your content, the uh, more that algorithm is affected, that they're gonna, they're probably gonna get more of your content in the net in in their news feed down the road. Mm -hmm. So engage more engagement helps, um, but realize, I mean, uh, you know, they have six million likes. I I mean, six million people didn't see this. It probably didn't show up in you know, maybe a million or two feeds. Um, so it's just a numbers game. Um, what they're what they're playing is a, a numbers game. But as a small business, you can be more engaged with your clients. Uh, you know, you can you can have really highly engaged clients if you're doing the right strategy. Um, so. Uh, <coughs> Then more likely that information. Then whenever you do a post, it's going to show up in that person's feed. So I, the reason why Upworthy shows up in my feed a lot is because yeah. I'm the guy who's been clicking on this mm -hmm. and, and watching their videos, right? Um, the uh, let me just see if I can. This is one. Um, see if I can. Um, just type in Keller and see what. Here's Keller. Okay, here. So here's a buy and sell. And you'll actually, I'm not a member of that. We need to find one that I am. So, all right. So here's here's a village of Woodland Springs. There's quite a few marketers that you probably know that actually post a little bit on here, even though this is really the homeowners association page. But this is a, a community that has 4,000 homes in it, and so this is where that this community hangs out sometimes, and they ask each other questions and things like that, right? So um, this is a place where you can share a post. I'm trying to see if I can find one. They'll tell you, you know, careful about it. It can't be all businesses, um, and they will delete it if it's, you know, too crazy. But I'm trying to let me find one that. So here's here's a perfect example. This is a, a realtor, and they posted it into the into the Villages of Woodland Springs Homeowners Association. It's a house in the neighborhood. So why wouldn't people want to see this? So it's a that. So they figured out. Hey, instead of posting on, instead of having uh, my own page, my own business page, my strategy should be: let me go where customers already, where the community is, and I'll just post on their community page. And so, you know, you re so how you would do that is: this is a group, so you would you have to request a request, I pronounce it, and get permission to be part of that group. Um, once you have permission, then you can post like anybody else. So that, that's uh, now when it um, this if people are engaging and that post uh, for your business post, it will probably show up in their feed. And because you know the people that are on here a lot, um, I, I go here quite a bit because I just like you know if a neighbor has a question, you know, a lot of dogs missing or something, and I can you know be useful to my neighbor. Then great, I'm happy to do so. So it shows up in my feed. Um, all right, la uh, so I see the last question. What does boost a post mean? And uh, so boosting a post would be essentially uh, you're you're saying to Facebook, hey, I know you're going to put my post in the in the news feed for for a certain amount of people. I'd like to pay more. I'd like to pay five bucks and guarantee that you post it in, you know, a thousand people's news feed. So they'll take, they'll, you know, they'll run an algorithm and figure out, you know, who that is. Uh, so just had a question about engagement being low. Um, sorry, I had to take a second to recap. Um, 
so uh, hopefully I answered the boost post question. The next question is about in having low engagement, um, and I really, I do think a contest um, is a great way to increase engagement. Um, Gerard, uh, you ought to, you and I ought to get offline and uh, talk a little bit about how I can, you know, use the tips and help you, help you uh, increase that. Um, all right. Any so we're getting close, and I like to be on time, uh, start on time, and end on time. So uh, we have a couple minutes. Um, so this would be a great time to get your last question in. Of course, if um, uh, put myself back on screen, if um, uh, if you want to take my email down, Tim at txcoffeenews.com. Uh, the Happy to answer any questions. If you think of it later, just shoot me a note, and I'll get you taken care of. Um, Kathy, how, how about you? Any any last uh, last words of wisdom? I know you're yeah, a big. We're, we're glad everybody was able to attend today and just build. I know you have any questions place. or suggestions or ideas for future. We'd glad to be glad to hear them. Yes, that's a great that's a great point. Thank you. Yeah. Um, we are uh, looking for tips and suggestions for the next uh, webinar, so if you guys have any ideas, feel free to put it in the chat box. And All right, guys, hope they, I, I know this was useful. Um, don't let it overwhelm you. Keep it simple. Do your homework on the front end. You know, Figure out what your real strategy is going to be. Put some thought into that, and that will help you get clear and then you can start uh, with a real purpose as to what you're going to accomplish, and then you can start scheduling it, uh, blocking out an hour a week, and scheduling your post, and and then you can uh, not have to worry about it, right? Not let it overwhelm you. And then um, I don't stay on Facebook all the time because it is a distraction to me, so I have a time that I allow myself, uh, and I go on there at that time, and I try to pay attention to, you know, how much time I'm on it. Um, so uh, I do have to be on it a little bit just to, you know, um, for my business page, just to make sure, you know, I'm um, being forthcoming. But I, I, I certainly don't answer it instantly. Uh, I, you know, I've, I have about a 24-hour response period. So um, take those tips and make it work for you, and I know you will. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you guys. That concludes our Greater Keller Chamber Lunch and Learn webinar for Facebook tips and tricks. <laughs>